What's going on everyone? So once again, we start off the week with a lot of spoilers to talk about. There's a new leader, a crazy new card, and a bunch of spoilers over the weekend from Spain. And we're not gonna waste any time. Big thank you to my patrons over on Patreon, guys. Love you all and thank you for supporting me. Use my TCG player link if you wanna pick up any of these cards for set three, but I wanna dive straight into it because I am excited and we gotta start off with a brand new base in Droid Factory. So Droid Factory here, is a new command base um, and it is a 24 health base so the previous one was 26 hp and the ones that we have right now are 25 this one's 24 and it just says when you deploy a leader you create two battle droid tokens now remember these bases are not heroism or villainy dependent so even though you create two battle droid tokens you can play this in heroism as well and actually even though this is battle droid tokens and there's a whole exploit synergy to me, this is a leader that actually fits a little bit better for the coordinate synergy. So few things with this one. One, losing six HP on a base is a lot, okay? Losing five HP is already a lot and adding another point onto that is gonna be really tricky. And so in order to even use this to a point where you actually are gonna take advantage, not only of just, you know, you building a deck around the battle droid tokens or using them, but also being able to survive to the point where you can actually use them in general, you're going to need to either be a very aggressive so the hp loss doesn't matter as much or b have some way to kind of recover some hp later on in the game some sort of healing mechanism so for example double green palpatine is a perfect example of a deck that while in some cases you aren't really healing all that much the passive healing throughout the game adds up to a lot at the end and that can really help you kind of bail out and they're playing a 30 hp base but that said, these two battle droid tokens, A, work really well with exploit, and B, work really well with coordinate. Now, as I said earlier, I think coordinate's the more exciting variant, and that's because if you think about, let's say, Ahsoka, the new red-green heroism deck, you play droid manufactory, uh, manufactory, and you get down on Ahsoka, boom, suddenly you are creating two battle droid tokens immediately enabling coordinate. And if you remember... Um, what coordinate does uh, for Ahsoka, and this is just one example, we are able to go ahead and immediately, here's the front side, uh, get the action. If let's say you deploy the leader um, and after she dies, you're able to get that action. But more importantly, you just get a five, six for five resources, which is pretty impressive, right? Not to say that that's extremely strong because you're still sacrificing like energy conversion lab and red green heroism, but that coordinate synergy is hard to enable and is something that I've been worried about, but immediately creating two additional units immediately turns on coordinate for any unit you play afterwards, which is pretty impressive. The exploit portion of it can be a little bit interesting. Um, if you have some sort of villainy leader that deploys a little bit earlier, like four or five, this might be able to be used to exploit something really massive. Or let's say you're playing a vigilance command deck. Like let's say you're playing Obi-Wan. You deploy Obi-Wan and suddenly you can exploit invasion of Christophsis and completely one side board wipe your opponent. Now, whether or not that's worthwhile, like exploiting into bigger things is going to be useful remains to be seen because again, you're losing six HP on this base. So are you even going to be able to survive until you can exploit things? I'm not sure. And again, the thing that I'm more excited about is an early deploy leader that's trying to end the game by the time like you reach turn four, turn five. Like if you think about it, you get like a Kylo Ren type leader where you empty out your hand, you deploy Kylo Ren, you get a bunch of battle droid tokens, and then some of the other cards that you're drawing exploit out and they're big heavy hitters to finish out the game. Something like that could be a little bit more exciting, but we have yet to see the exploit cards that are really going to enable this. And we have yet to see the coordinate cards that are really going to enable this. So I will wait to reserve my, or I'll reserve my final judgment, but it seems pretty exciting to say the least. Next up, we got a new flagship seven cost space unit in Tranquility, a Heroism unit, just heroism. 7-6 Republic, uh, Republic Vehicle Capital Ship. When play, you may return a Republic unit from your discard pile to your hand and on attack each of the next three Republic cards you play this phase cost one less. I want to be honest, guys, even though this is rare, it's a capital ship, it's seven resources, it's got to be big, right? I think this is pretty bad. I actually do not think this card is going to be playable at all. And there's a few reasons for it, but if you look at the Republic kind of synergies that we have right now, we're really looking to go wine and benefit from coordinate. There are a few decks that might be able to go around that. For example, like Obi-Wan looks like it could be a little bit more of a longer game plan, but this is not a good payoff for that, right? 
getting one card back one republic unit from your discard pile to your hand is not that strong its stat line isn't insane a seven resource seven six in space is not like insane it's good it's just not amazing and when you get that one resource cost discount that doesn't really give you all that much either it's not like you are able to go ahead and ramp a ton and at that point there isn't really going to be a ton of republic cards that are going to be ramping you're going to be ramping to in anyways and also at the same point you're most likely not going to be able to make three plays in a single turn and even if you can you could have most likely made two plays that turn and you probably were already winning anyways this just seems very much like a win more type card and it's not going to help you actually stabilize which is one of the big things that these cards really struggle with like playing this card let's say on turn six you're trying to outvalue your opponent right you play this card it does nothing for you unless your opponent's also playing a space deck where you're able to trade off with units that's the only way this thing actually gives you an immediate board uh, kind of recovery unlike you know darth vader who comes down the same resource cost but not only ambushes something but also puts another unit into play to kind of leverage the resources that you have at that point or maul that also ambushes stuff so this to me just seems pretty mediocre to bad However, next up, we got a brand new leader in Padme Amidala, a uh, pretty sweet looking leader. We've got a uh, command heroism leader with coordinate action, one resource, exhaust, search the top three cards of your deck for Republic card, draw it and reveal it. And then you put the other cards on the bottom of your deck. Also, you can only use this ability while you have coordinate, right? So you can't do this when you only have two units or one unit you must have three units on the battlefield and again since this is an action from your leader you need to have three other units not just padme as a leader her flip side is a five resource flip by the way and one of the first things i saw when i saw this two seven stat line five resources i thought krennic not to mention i was like i need some restoring if i'm going to be using this ability and she's a two seven naboo republic official Restore one and with coordinate on attack, search the top three cards of your deck for a public card, reveal it and draw it. <sighs> Unfortunately for me, this is going to be kind of a below average leader, in my opinion. We've seen a lot of these decks or leaders that are trying to draw cards and they've all kind of fallen short, right? You look at Cassian, not really that great. You look at Hunter, absolutely atrocious. These cards, I think, are in some cases, at least Cassian. A little bit easier to draw cards with not to mention this also costs you one resource alongside those other ones right so you do need that one resource but having three units on the battlefield well it's going to be a lot easier in this set because of things like batch brothers and and ch token generation of course are you really going to uh, leverage the additional resources in order for you to leverage the additional cards that you're going to have in hand while also spending resources in the early game to draw those cards but you also need cards that you had to have deployed in the early game to have even had the attempt to draw those cards. It just seems that there's so much set up for this and so many specific things that need to go right in order for you to even get value out of this. What I do like about her is this 2-7 stat line with Restore 1. If this was more like Critic with Restore 2, I would be a little bit higher on this card because you'd actually have the ability to restore to a point where maybe you could actually start drawing a bunch of cards and getting some value. But unfortunately for me, I just don't really see why you'd be playing Command Heroism um, and trying to do this coordinate drawing cards thing. If there's some sort of like Command Vigilance deck where it's more controlling, maybe I could see it, but we would need a lot of Republic cards that are really solid for this to be working. Because again, it only draws Republic cards. So if your removal events aren't Republic, guess what? You can't draw them, which kind of hinders that plan as well. And mind you, even if you're playing a troll deck, you need to have three units on the battlefield for this to work. So it really just doesn't feel like it's going to be able to function with how many requirements it has. Next up, though, we got Captain Typho. This one's a three resource ground unit in Vigilance Heroism 2 4 Naboo Republic Trooper. When played and on attack, you give a unit Sentinel for this phase. So a pretty mediocre stat line for three resources. I've seen like three resource three fours at the regular. Three resource four threes is way better than two four because it just straight up kills it and doesn't even die. Um, we've even seen three resource four fours, okay? However, this has an interesting ability where you can guarantee give something Sentinel for this phase. And if you're managed to keep initiative, you can constantly give Sentinel to something. Remember, when you play this, you are able to give Sentinel to itself. So it becomes a 2-4 Sentinel if you wish to do so. 
to me this could potentially have some implications i think of like obi-wan leader when i think of this card you start passing around sentinel you start healing up a little bit and suddenly your opponent can maybe chunk a little bit of damage on one sentinel but then you get sentinel on something else so now they can't hit that other sentinel um because it no longer has sentinel and you could heal it up and then you can give sentinel to that unit again and like something crazy like that to me though while that does sound like a cool idea and there are some things that you might be able to do with it i don't really see this being all that great because of the stat line if this was a three four i might be a little bit more inclined to try it out and and, and really be excited about it and obviously i'm going to try it out but a two four just not exactly strong enough for me to be excited about it Next up, though, we got 501st Liberator, and this one is a brand new three resource ground unit, 3 3, Republic Clone Trooper, and it's pretty straightforward. When played, if you control the Republic unit, you may heal three damage from a base. And this, to me, is really exciting. So we've seen the kind of three resource 3 threes that gets in damage, but this one's a three resource 3 3 that heals you. And that could be potentially really interesting. Now, this is more for like the curve out soft control decks. Like I'm thinking like Kira Green right now, where you're kind of curving out, but you're able to control the board and then you're able to leverage additional high value spells uh, and events later on in the game. And this might be able to get you there. Now, one of the big problems with this is that even though you're healing three, if you have another Republic unit, uh, the stat line doesn't match up well against a lot of the meta cards that are being played. Because again, most of them are like three fours, for example, at a minimum. And that can be a little bit tricky. Fleet Lieutenant, one of the reasons why it's so good is that you're trying to get in damage and your opponent's trying to hit your units anyways. And so, well, it probably would have died regardless. This one, you might want to be trading off with the other units so that you're able to survive. It could be a really nice sideboard option. Like if you are going wide and you want to heal up while also putting board or, or cards on the board for coordinate things and such things like that. Maybe we got something there. I think this is pretty interesting. I'm excited about it. And this might be one of the like the sleeper common units that we have if we're able to trigger this very regularly, because that's the other half of it. Is it do, will it be able to trigger every single time? And would you play a three resource three three that heals you three when it comes into play? I would say in some decks, I would definitely give it a try because I think it's actually pretty strong. Next up, though, we got heavy and a four resource four four in aggression. Absolutely love this guy. Uh, I'm surprised it's not heroism. Like this perfectly exemplifies heroism to me, uh, at least from the Clone Wars series. Republic Clone Trooper, coordinate with Raid 2, and when defeated, you deal one damage to each enemy ground unit. So the when defeated trigger might not seem like a lot, but it kills every single battle droid token. That's pretty relevant, um, especially even considering sideboard potential. So that's something we always have to keep in mind. The four resource four four is a pretty reasonable stat line. We've seen like K2SO be relevant, even though uh, most of it's because of the on defeat trigger, but the four four stat line still is pretty good. Coordinate with raid two makes it a six four on attacks. If you have two other units on the battlefield, I think that with it being aggression, we've seen like batch brothers, for example, and you can curve into it. This might be a very powerful, like four resource aggressive Republic unit that you come down uh, and you're able to just go ahead and hit their base for a lot. Remember, if you hit it with a four or five, your four or five dies. Like if you have a Kanan and you hit heavy, Kanan dies too because of the one damage when defeated trigger. So heavy actually trades up into even the four or five stats that a lot of people are playing, which gives me a little bit more hope for this card because even though it can get dwarfed in some cases, in terms of just stats, the when defeated kind of brings it back, not just hitting Troy tokens, but also giving that extra damage that your opponent would have taken from the heavy attack or attacking heavy itself. So I think this actually is pretty interesting. I would not play this if there's no battle droid tokens being meta and there's not a good way to get coordinate or there's not like Republic or clone synergies, but that's where we're headed. So I'm expecting this to be a, a nice potential curve filler. But next up, we got a bunch of cards from Spain. Um, now, uh, I do not have the actual english version so i'm going to rely on the reddit translation here but first off we have the clone wars this was uh, again from spain but turns out that it's in english pay any number of resources for two resources uh to start right so it's two resources to start it's an event in command you then may pay any number of resources create that many clone trooper tokens each opponent creates that many battle droid tokens now from what i read here and from my what this kind of um seems to me is that you do not get two clone trooper tokens to start 
you don't just create two clone trooper tokens um when you play this for two resources that would be absurd because you go turn one two clone trooper tokens that could be really strong granted your opponent creates two battle droid tokens but you dwarf them because they're two twos versus one ones this is i pay two resources then i play or i pay an additional four resources and i get four clone troopers you get four battle droids that to me while it is interesting and you can't flood the board massively it's not that exciting a lot of resources and your opponent still gets something out of it and especially if your opponent's playing coordinates or if your opponent's playing um exploit uh synergies then this might just be an immense downside because you're only getting small buffs in terms of unit quality while your opponent can also make other plays so to me this seems a little bit weak however we got a couple other cards to talk about and this one is a one resource space unit in cunning villainy a one two and this one has a translation down here it's called solace one on attack you may exhaust a friendly droid unit or general grievous and this is important leader or unit if you do this opponent this unit gains plus two plus oh for this attack so what this is is a one resource three two on attacks in a general grievous deck in space and remember it's in cunning villainy which is the triple dark raid colors that's really powerful if you have a droid unit and at any point uh and you're able to kind of convert the friendly droid unit damage like a battle droid token or you have general grievous as a leader this can pump in a massive chunk of damage we've seen cartel spacers at two three getting in tons of damage but this is a one resource three two so if you're able to deploy this and like greedo you can have a massively massively aggressive start if there's other space units that you could potentially play alongside it what you really need to do is leverage the industrial resource that you're getting from playing this for one resource and then it becomes really powerful or play it alongside other units later on in the game and i can see this being a really powerful unit to add to the roster next up we got relentless rocket droid it is a ground unit in aggression for four resources and it says when you control another trooper it gains plus two plus oh and has a three five stat line to at its base so if you're playing a trooper deck this is a four resource five five that's pretty impressive okay that's pretty impressive and you just dwarf a lot of stats right it is a separatist it is a droid which are both relevant this to me fits really well in the curve like i would potentially play a four resource five five if it has enough relevant tags and having the separatist tag having the droid tag and having the trooper tag is really relevant because most all clone troopers are troopers so they're clone troopers so it's going to synergize with those most separatists uh, separatists are droids and they're also troopers and then of course you have a lot of trooper synergy cards already within the game so i could see potentially like a general tag being amazing in a trooper deck with this right it's just a nice static unit that fits in that theme lastly though and the last one we're going to talk about and this one might be exciting for some of you we have sabine ren unit part two four resource ground unit in cunning in heroism it's a four four fringe mandalorian specter important tag there while this unit is exhausted she can't be attacked unless she has sentinel and on attack you may discard a card from your deck if it doesn't share an aspect with a with your base you deal two damage to a ground unit so first things first um, this is the Sabine Wren from kind of like the Shadows of the Galaxy portion, where it's the New Republic um, Sabine Wren. We see this with in the Ahsoka TV series that was just released. This is the Sabine Wren that it's really referring to. Um, but realistically, this card has the Spectre tag, which could be relevant for Hera if we have more Spectres coming in. Maybe this is a card you'll want to cheat on aspects to have in your deck. It has Mandalorian tag, which could be relevant as well. The 4-4 four, four stat line for 4, we talked about how that could be okay, but there are things that dwarf it, like 4-5s, like Kanan, for example. However, she cannot be attacked while she's exhausted. So when you play her, she can't be attacked. The next turn, she readies up. She can be attacked, but if you attack, she can't be attacked again. And on attack, you get to potentially deal 2 damage to a ground unit. It seems to me like a little bit average i'm not super excited about this card the stat line is okay one of the big things about heavy that i didn't mind was that even if you do get attacked by a four five you still trade with it and sabine doesn't do this and she doesn't have an uh, when defeated trigger and she doesn't have a when a more powerful on attack trigger like k2 
She doesn't have like overwhelm, so she can't be ECL'd out if you're playing like yellow green, for example, which you're not. And also she has a little bit of a weaker tag in my opinion. However, she has some potential with the tags that she has, as well as that really interesting ability to not be attacked. If you can really play around that, maybe she's worth playing. But overall, guys, that's going to be the entirety of the list today. Um, there are a ton of cards. I think we went over like eight or nine or uh, I don't even know. New base. I think this new base is pretty sweet. I'm pretty excited about it for both variations of coordinate and exploit. We have the new leader in Padme, new capital ship. Let me know what your favorite card is. The card I'm definitely most excited about has got to be the, um, the one resource space unit. The new base is really interesting to me and actually the 501st Liberator. I think this has a lot of potential inside the game. Let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you all for the next one.